All right, Busher, we're heading into the winter season now. Have you been keeping up your manscaping routine? Most certainly. I'm keeping a bit of extra length for that warmth, though, in winter, but I am maintaining a good routine. How's your love life going at the moment, though? Pretty bloody quiet, if I've got to tell the truth. That's weird, because normally AFL YouTubers are swimming in hot honeys. Really? No. I must be around the periphery. <laughs> well, believe it or not, I actually had a date the other night, and Manscaped's elite body shaving products allowed me to get the job done quickly and easily. But how'd the date go? Well, she pulled out at the last minute because she wasn't interested. All right, Kathy, that's the oldest trick in the book. She's going to come crawling right back. Kathy, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. Please take me back. I'm incredibly lonely. Well, it's good that you have the lawnmower 3.0 for such an occasion. This is the best trimmer on the market for those of you in need of a chest shave. Their third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to advanced skin safe technology pioneered by Manscaped. That was a nice read. Was that was good. That was clean. This is <laughs> fucking <laughs> smooth. <laughs> yeah. Just like my nuts, thanks to the lawnmower 3.0. <laughs> too much, too much, too much. And on top of that, the trimmer is actually both waterproof and has a 90 minute battery runtime. I actually worked out that you could watch four full episodes of Sex in the City in the bath before it times out. How did you find that out? Eh, just looked it up. It's good that you can actually grab the Perfect Package 3.0, which not only comes with the trimmer, but also the Manscaped Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You're right, because testicle stank is actually one of the reasons she gave for cancelling the date. Well, luckily, you'll also find the Crop Reviver Ball Toner, a testy toner that's designed to give you a pep in your step. The good news we have for you today, for viewers and listeners of the True Footy Podcast, you can get 20% off Manscaped's Elite Ball Grooming products using the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word, you get 20% off their products and you get free shipping. Do you think we should be putting in more effort to getting girls? Look, Bush, you're probably right. I have got a dope new mullet at the moment. So what do you say after this, we go drive around Rockingham looking to pick up chicks? I'll see you at the Swinging Pig, son. I'll get my overalls. All right, g'day, guys. Welcome back to True Footy Podcast 75, the three-quarter century, Bush. It's uh, iconic. It is iconic, kind of. Yeah, back to... T- uh, I was having a look, True Footy Podcast 25 was our 2018 draft review. Ooh. And True Footy Podcast 50 was Cade McDonald as a guest on the podcast. And today, for 75, we're joined once again by Lenny Fogliani, back by popular demand. How are you, mate? Oh, very good, thank you. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, no problem. Our pleasure. Uh, what's it like to be a Fremantle fan right now? Uh, frustrating. Yeah? Yeah, like, I think... I think Fair's best is very good, but they're just not consistent mm. enough. And it also sucks when your best player can't kick goals and he likes <laughs> kicking more behinds than goals, I'd say. But yeah. That's now, been an issue for Freo across the board, hasn't it? Yeah. Like the behinds. Yeah. Look, I think I still think they're on the right path and I think there's a lot of talent, but just the injuries are decimating them. A bit mm. like your boys as well. Mm. Very true. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it, it is pleasing that we're playing a little bit better. Um, in fact, I think we're playing at a higher level in the last few weeks uh, than we have all season yeah. in terms of intensity. But Classic Fremantle playing teams in the form. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think the Eagles kind of needed to have a response in that game, so mm-hmm. it was probably a bad way to catch us. But we will talk more about the Eagles and Dockers throughout the podcast because today, like so many of our other podcasts, uh, we've got a, quite a few questions from Discord. And this time I actually put a post on Instagram asking for questions, so we've got quite a few today. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll pretty much let the, the questions dictate the course of this podcast, as we so often do. Yep. The first question is from Jordan is Leaping. Uh, why is Manscaped such a good ball grooming service? Well, funny you ask. <laughs> um, but no, that you should have your question answered because before this podcast started, we will have done an ad. So you can see why they are both a great sponsor and a great uh, ball grooming service. <laughs> well, it's actually not a Well, you can't see. Service. We're not showing you that. We're not yeah. showing you that they're a great ball True. grooming service. True. And it's also not a ball grooming service as a product because yeah. imagine they actually show you <laughs> balls. They just send someone around to yeah. show you balls for. Now, that's a service. It's an important uh, clarification that we make there. Definitely. Um, all right, so then we'll, we'll move into the next question. We had four people ask on the same topic, and this is a topic. It is a big one. topic. To it is fair. a hot topic. Uh, no pun intended there. It's a bad pun. Um, <laughs> it's a hot topic. It's a place where you buy golf clothes. Yeah. Fair <laughs> is enough. Is that a thing? Is yeah, it's a place okay. in America called Hot Topic. They sell like hell golf shit there. Yeah, right, fair yeah. enough. <laughs> South Park took the piss out of it. One episode it was hilarious. Nice. Um, we're talking about Billy Re- uh, Willy Rioli. <laughs> Uh, uh, to be fair, I think I stole your joke there. That was, that was yours. I've but, used that one a lot. Mm, mm. It is actually kind of not really a funny situation, but um, as Billy Rioli really worked better when the Gatorade bottle thing was first thing because you could mm. make the Gatorade bottle Billy jokes. Yeah, it right. worked better back then. Um, yeah, it still works, obviously. Okay. But yeah, we're tearing apart my joke here. Um, <laughs> no, it is. It is kind of a for an Eagles fan. It's a, it's a bit more of a bleak scenario, and it, it's yeah. a bit grim. Um, so we had four people ask this question. So Barry1645, Kristen Hogan, Falcon, and Josh Humphreys. So uh, thank you for your question. 
Um, I guess first of all, to sort of summarise what what is going on for anyone who's not fully aware, uh, if you don't know by now, you're probably living under the rock under a rock. But Willy Rioli was uh, banned by Asada for two years uh, yep. from the AFL for three urine. charges. Th- was it three charges? Three charges, two of tampering, one of the marijuana. Okay, yeah. Yep. Okay, so yeah, that's right. He was he, he was caught uh, substituting his urine for Gatorade yep. Um, yep. to avoid testing positive and then he was also subsequently he tested, tested again, positive and so yeah. and so that's the context and then what happened the other day was that he went to the airport to fly intra-territory from yeah. from Darwin to the Tiwi Islands if I'm not mistaken and was caught with possession not not on large amount do you remember how much it was? it was 24 grams or so yeah. which is that is, that like, is a lot actually isn't it? yeah for Weed, that's a lot of weed. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I know some chronic smokers, that'd last them about a month. Yeah, you've done a lot of research into this. Huh? <laughs> a lot of <laughs> consumer research. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, anyway, so I get the question is uh, how should the Eagles handle it? So, as we know, the the they were he was slapped with a $500 fine and a suspended yeah. sentence. Yeah. So, yeah, bond, good behavior, good bond. behavior bond, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Good behavior bond, that's right. So, um, I guess, Lenny, from an outside non West Coast fan perspective, what, what do you make of this situation? Uh, I think I'm just going to go along the lines that uh, Craig Vozo, the um, general manager of footy at West Coast, said. It's like, you've got an incredible anger towards him, but you're also incredibly sad for him. Mm -hmm. Um, Anger because you would have thought he would have, I suppose, grown up a bit realising, okay, like, this is the last thing I need to do for my career. But at the same time, he would have just been incredibly stressed, you know, because he basically got banned, but no one knew for how long. So... In a lot of ways, the system did fail Willie, but he's also failed himself. So it's you've got that mixture of you're angry that he did such a stupid thing, but you're also sad because he's probably probably been failed mm. in a lot of ways. That's a very fair, very fair observation. Uh, what do you make of it, Busher? Well, it's one of those things. Like I'm one, of, I'm a, more of an advocate for like weight and all that sort of stuff. But ultimately, if you're a professional athlete getting paid a lot of money, like it's the same as a FIFO job. You've got to like maintain your responsibility, do the right thing, like. Even if it is ultimately something that's considered harmless by a lot of people, yeah. you've been held to higher standards because you've taken a position where they hold you to these standards. Like, I think the other as thing- Stephen A. Smith always sort of says when he talks about the NFL, NBA guys who have weed discretions, he's like, it's not about the fact you're doing it, it's about the fact your employer has these standards for you, they're paying you a lot yeah. of money to maintain these standards and you're kind of laughing in their face mm. especially think, trying to smuggle nearly a fucking ounce through an airport it's ridiculous <laughs> yeah they, I mean the stupidity you can't argue with but it. in saying all that I also <laughs> heard that I heard this Willie's been to about 38 funerals or something in the past 18 months two years so yeah. you can sort of understand it's a shitty situation he's gonna try and self-medicate that sort of thing like yeah. there's certainly empathy for a rough trot there yeah. I think the thing just going off a bit before that is um You know, like, the part that's frustrating for it is you would have thought he's already been banned from weed, so you would think he's going to be a bit smarter in public places with that. Mm. Like, if he was, say, just at the back of his dad's place and they just smoked a billy, you'd probably just be like, oh, who cares? But Mm. when you're going into an airport where they're obviously going to search you... And another factor as well, that, like the fact he was taking it to the Tiwi Islands. I know a lot of these indigenous communities have their own rules in terms of like the dry sites, like no alcohol, not bringing in drugs. Like the communities yeah. have their own standards for these sort of things. I've heard of some like indigenous communities where if you try and bring alcohol and stuff in, they'll beat the shit out of you. That sort of stuff. Like, yeah, really. Yeah, because they have like they're allowed to do more stuff like that in their communities. Yeah. I mean, I, the thing is, as well, if you look at this instance in isolation, it's a very minor thing that he's done. It's, mm. it's obviously the context around yeah. the fact that he's serving a ban yeah. for cannabis-related yep. offences yep. um, that it just boggles the mind. And it's quite evident, in my opinion, uh, that he probably has a problem. Yeah. I think if you're, like you say, Lenny, if you're going through an airport where, I know he's not crossing any borders technically, but if you're going to get searched anywhere, it's probably an airport, right? Exactly. You'd think yeah. there's a 90% chance that yeah. you're going to get searched. Exactly right. It's the only so. place I've ever seen a sniffer dog other than a music festival. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's true. But uh, to, to run that risk that he was, he must have a problem. That's that's yeah. the, the conclusion that I've come to. Um, Especially which, the quantity. like That yeah. suggests like he needs to s- sustain a habit. Mm. Like if yeah. you need that much for a trip to the TY Islands, that's habit that's being sustained for sure yeah yeah so as an eagles fan it was just incredible disappointment we should also make the distinction so that people understand like it's 
not really related to his previous offences in terms of this doesn't compound his ban. Like, there's yeah. no risk of... Um, yeah, I don't think there's much risk for further punishment other than, like, yeah. AFL or club imposed. But Exactly yeah. right. So, the... But the, I don't even know if the AFL really has too much jurisdiction. I could be wrong. Uh, because I think their drug policy refers to, you know, testing positive while playing. Like free strikes or whatever. There is a strike yeah. policy, and I, I'm not across it fully. Um, so maybe someone in the comments can sort of shed some light, but... If he's already serving a ban in his sort of in his private capacity, not training and playing, mm. um, didn't test positive, it was possession. Then I don't know if the the policy fully co- fully covers it. I would have been interested as well because like the fact he was ha- like because he was due back June twentieth at the uh, end yeah, of it to train. The yeah. fact he was has an ounce on him that close to that date, I highly doubt he'd be able to test negative. If he'd planned on smoking that ounce and rolling up June twentieth. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. That's the other thing. If he does have a problem, which it seems he does, then it, then there's concerns going forward yeah. about his ability to test negative yeah. throughout the rest of his Especially career. Especially with weed, because it stays in your system so much longer. Like that's the annoying thing. Like you see, so many AFL guys like out on weekends, buddy, mm. taking other recreational drugs that are out of their system in a day or two, and they don't get caught. But yeah, someone has a chuff and they're screwed for the next two weeks if they get tested. Yeah. So my understanding of the situation, to sum up with uh, with how they should handle it, is, uh, I mean, it's not an Asada issue, so like we can put the ban aside for a yeah, moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's this. It could go one of two ways. That it's been before the courts. We've had that ruling. It's a pretty minor offence. In terms of the AFL, whether I'm right about the public policy, I might not be. But I think if it's a second strike, it's a four game ban. Mm-hmm. So again, doable. But then again, you're on second strike. So then yeah, it becomes really dicey for his career. Uh, and then there's the way the club handle it, and I think that's where it gets really dicey for Willie. Yeah, because yeah, I'm half expecting they will say no, thank you. Because I did, I was listening to like the footy classified. I think it was with like Ross and Eddie, and they were talking about it the other day. They were talking a bit about like how the Eagles in particular react negative to it. like, mm. even though we've all agreed it's not that bad, but like the optics of it, like yeah. drugs and all that sort of stuff, like that's something the Eagles are particularly like aware of the optics of because yes. of their issues with like guys like Cuz, man yeah. wearing those sort of dudes. Well, I think that's why it's probably a more dicey situation for Willie because they're probably going, well, you know, we've already been through Cousins, we've been through Main Waring, we've been through Kerr, Fletcher, all those guys. It's like, do we really want another case? Mm -hmm. I mean, I hope they give him another chance, even if it's just he's playing for their waffle team, which I know there's been a bit of talk about their waffle team about maybe being there, but... Even if it's just, Willie, we're going to get you down here, you can train with our waffle side and we'll help you get into rehab, but... It's like what you were saying and what I think Andrew Embley or Xavier Ellis were saying is he needs to get in front of the board, in in front of the playing group, in front of the whole football staff and just go, look, I figured it out. I've got a problem. I need help. And the thing is, once you admit it, I think people become a lot more forgiving. Mm. Whereas if you keep going, no, 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 I don't have a problem. But it's obvious mm. you do. Everyone kind of goes, well, yeah. at some point you're going to have to admit it. But... Look, if I was West Coast, I'd say to him, you're going to admit it to everyone. Um, we're going to help you as much as what we can. But for the rest of this year, you're going to train with our waffle side. Yeah. I wonder if it'll be similar. Because I remember years ago when Cuz had one of his incidents, they pretty much forced him to go on TV and apologise. Did they? Yeah, I remember it was like Club Impose. They pretty much forced him to go on news or whatever and like apologise for whatever particular I incident I think that was, was AFL as well. Because yeah, right. I think it was so, so bad. Yeah. Like, you know... You, the drugs cousins were on were so much greater, yeah. mm-hmm. so much <laughs> more <Ooh>. powerful <laughs> than what Willie is but, doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's still a little bit of apples and oranges comparing someone like cousins yeah. to Rioli, but yeah, I, I see the point. You're it's the optically more than practically. Is yeah, the, I like to think the clubs passed it a little bit. I mean, I, they I, are past it from like I, I'd certainly agree they're past their drug issues, but like, yeah, they it's are, just the optics sure. are sort of overly yeah, concerned but, about. I agree with your point, but I, I'd like to think the club are bigger than being like oh shit drugs again let's cut cut Mm. ties but there is a little interesting dynamic here where there is a little bit of a double standard where if a player is really good they get a lot more of a leash i had that exact thought where i was like if this was someone who was shit he'd already be on his ass yeah that's very true so there i do think there's a realistic double standard there and i think and my personal belief is willie rioli could be a potential all australian one day like he's so so good i think in terms of talent he's up there with liam ryan um a player they debuted at the same time so Mm. as an eagles fan that's why i really (laughs) wanted to see him return yeah i think I think you probably hit the nail on the head with how they should handle it. Make him yeah. fess up, admit he's got a problem, because I think he probably does. Yeah. Um, and hopefully he lives to fight another day, because, yeah, I really want to yeah. see him uh, in yeah. blue and gold specifically. Yeah. But I think he needs to play and train with the Waffle this year, and then mm. next year if he gets his 
Yeah, shit they might rookie list him. Yeah, I, can, I could see them rookie listing. Yeah, yeah, it is hard to imagine that he will front up for round twenty three, the first game he's eligible yeah. for, and yeah. play for the Eagles. So imagine the story if he just came back round twenty three, kicks three, gets them yeah. into finals, and then just takes them to another flag. Can you imagine social media's <laughs> response to that? They'd be like, "He's a drug cheat, eh?" <laughs> <laughs> even though Wider even said weed isn't performance enhancing, yeah. so that was the funny thing. Like if he just worn his yeah. failed weed test, it would have been yeah, that's right, slap on the wrist. We'll move on because um, we, we hit that question pretty hard. But we got some maybe some shorter fire questions as we go through this podcast. Uh, this one is from this one is from Black Man Ops. Um, Black Man Ops. He asks, "What can Richmond do with their key players out?" So Richmond have extensive injuries at the moment. Shane Edwards um, is out for four to six. Cotchin's out for a couple more. Uh, they've missed Dusty at times, and Shy Bolton obviously got into fisty cuffs in um, in a nightclub. I don't know how much to make there is of, of that yeah. from what it sounds like. Uh, that particular incident was, um, f- if I'm not mistaken, he was sort of defending a young female companion yeah. of his who was Rioli, being harassed. Well, was Dan- Re- Daniel Rioli's girlfriend was getting harassed. Was Daniel Rioli right? okay. went, what the hell are you doing? Someone clocked Dan Rioli. Is that right? Okay. Bolton yeah. jumped yeah. in. And I think when you look at the support, you know, from Dangerfield, AFLPA president, yeah. like yeah. all the other clubs, Eddie, like everyone sort of just defended the two of them. So it's yeah. not like... They've had 30 odd beers, they've gone out and they've exactly. just started on a bloke. It's more like they've defended someone and then. Yeah. I mean, there's people out trying to make it sound like they're in the wrong, but mm. they're probably just the idiots that just want to make a name for themselves off someone else's success. Yeah, that's right. I don't, I, as I said, I wasn't there, but it does sound like a you can sort of empathise yeah. a little bit yeah. with the, the boys that were involved. Um, obviously, you hear nightclub altercation, Richmond, um, yeah. broken wrist fight. You think, oh, yeah. here we go, controversy. But yeah, I, yeah. I think it's a pretty yeah. open and shut case. But the question is specifically about how can Richmond cope with their key players out? What have you made of Richmond of recent? I reckon they'll be happily copping the... Un- they'll happily cop the underdog status so when they're all healthy coming into finals again. <laughs> they always seem to do better when they're the underdog, apparently, so... That's a good point. Yeah. What about yourself, Lenny? What are your thoughts? uh, Look, they're still my tip for the flag, even though they've got Mm. a lot of players out. But now's the time for their young kids to come in. You know, Patrick Nash has been on that list for a while Mm. now. He'll probably start getting some games. Jackie Ross, bigger role. Yeah, Jack Ross is just going by the minute. Um, And then just their players will step up. You know, Hull is back in. You look still at the squad. I know they're missing Prestia, Koch, and um, Edwards now, who I think is still severely underrated in the league. But Mm. their depth is still amazing. Um, You know, Caddy, who wasn't getting a game, will come back in. Mm. Um, How far is Lambert from coming back? I think he's out as well, isn't he? Yeah, maybe a week or two. But, like, that's the thing. All the injuries are one or two. It's not like they're all done ACLs and they're out for the year. I Mm. think it's really on his shoulder. And... yeah. I think that allows them to get a pick in the mid-season draft, if I'm yeah, you not mistaken. The so, yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, look, <laughs> they'll win enough games to put them in the finals, and then we all know what Richmond can do in finals. So, um, look, the people that are saying it's season over for them, I think they need to... Uh, <laughs> yeah, stop to saying that understand. because you're bloody pumping them up as under <laughs> jobs. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, I agree. I... Uh, Obviously, the results at the moment haven't been great for Richmond. They did beat the Dogs, but then got clapped by um, by Geelong, Geelong on Friday yeah. night last week. What do they do with their key players out? There's not much you can do other than filter in the youth. But yeah. the thing is with Richmond that they've still got this elite system. And yeah. the, the players that come in, they're still just role players in some yeah. capacity. So that's all they can do. And yeah. they, they can all, only just get these guys in, get used to the system and hope for the best. Yeah. That's all you can do with these yeah. <laughs> injuries, you know. So... Um, like you say, I fully agree that if they slot into eighth, I will still be very worried about them winning the yeah. flag. So, yeah. and at the moment they sit eighth, um, and hopefully, well, I was going to say hopefully their injuries are behind them. But as a team, <laughs> contending for the flag, yeah, like wanting to at least break into the top six, um, you know, hopefully they don't come back too hard. Uh, more finals talk. This question is from Ben Herbie. Are the demons going to do what North did back in 2016? Now, just to clarify, North went nine and zero in 2016, and then slumped after that to finish eighth. And uh, I think they won their first final, um, but it, regardless, they slumped to, to eighth. Um, any opinions on Melbourne and whether they're going to do a North in 2016? Nah, no, they're too good. Yeah, I don't uh, think they'll do you, it. I think I said in the last party, Petrarca is easily the most valuable player in the comp. Um, I know Dusty, they'll piss Dusty off, but <laughs> you look at what Petrarca is doing at the moment. It's incredible. Their depth across the board is incredible. I think the biggest in they've got is Mark Williams, who, you know, yes. coached at Werribee, coached them to a flag. He coached Port Adelaide to a flag, obviously. 
So you've got that, he's like that sounding board for Goodwin and you can just see the way they're playing, they just don't care who's in front of them. They're just beating them. Like even against Richmond, like Richmond, it was almost like the, the whole Richmond team was overawed by um, Melbourne, not Melbourne being overawed by Richmond. So look, the way they're going, I think oh, look, they'll lose some games. I'm not saying they're going to win 22 mm. games, but I still think they'll be a top four team and do a bit of damage come September. Yes, uh, I'd agree. You agree with that? Yeah, yeah they're so, very talented compared to that North 16 team. Like that North 16 team sort of just had some good players that clicked at the right time early. They've heard some shit teams in that front half of the season, I think. I do remember that 2016 run from North Melbourne, actually. Yeah. Um, and I did a bit of research into the teams they beat. So they went 9 0, but they beat Carlton, Essendon, St Kilda, the Dogs, Gold Coast, Fremantle, Melbourne, Brisbane, and Adelaide. Only two of those teams were finalists. Admittedly, the Dogs, um, they, the won, they came seventh and won the flag, yep. but they still only came seventh. Uh, and the Adelaide. other one was Adelaide, that's right. Um, then after that, they lost four of the next five against the actual top teams of the yeah. comp. The Swans, the Cats, the Hawks, and the Crows. Now, yeah, to only beat two finals, I actually remember during that run thinking, North, yeah. I mean, they've probably got finals sewn up, but I don't think they're that good. I didn't yeah. expect them to yeah. slump all the way to eighth. Yeah. But I do remember this narrative of, oh, I don't really see yeah. it, and I was not on my own there. Yeah. No one's really saying that about Melbourne. Um, no. I know it's Melbourne, so they could drop off a cliff. But, but they showed the form a couple of years ago that they've got the potential yes. to live up to. Yeah, yeah, and on talent, like you said, yeah. that the list talent Melbourne has, yeah. and it's across the whole ground, for yeah. middle, back, ruck, yeah. uh, it is comfortably ahead of North. Yeah, Sam Wiedemann hasn't been able to get a game until yeah. probably this week with Luke Jackson out. Yes, and, and they've got four line options. Killing waffle, v- VFL. As well. yeah. yeah, Tom McDonald kicked four uh, yep. on the weekend, yep. and um, and obviously Ben Brown's back in the side. Bailey Fritch kicked six a fortnight ago. So uh, on top of Cosie Pickett having you yeah. know an amazing season, so yeah. uh, suddenly the forward line's clicking. And yeah, I think yeah. Melbourne are here to stay. I agree with that. Javka wants to know, is Tex Walker no longer a threat to teams after a few quiet weeks or will he bounce back and challenge Mackay for the common? And the second follow-up question to that is from Causa B21. Do you think Harry Mackay can win the common? So I guess, what do you think of the, the common race at the moment, Lenny? Uh, look, I think Mackay is probably the favourite. Mm. Obviously, he's in front, but look, Te- Tex is still second. Mm. It's not like he's dropped to six with only 18 goals. He's still got 27. Look, they're playing West Coast this week. I'm, they are, yeah. I'm not sure if McGovern or Barras are in. Both are listed as a fitness test, so we're hoping okay. to get both back. Yep. And Barras is the more likely of the two. He should be back after yep. nearly making it fall. Yeah, okay. So, look, in that instance, he'll still kick one or two against mm. West Coast. Mm. Melbourne, he might be able to kick one or two. I mean, I think May and Lever are leading the All-Australian race, along with Aaliyah. Yeah. Um, Richmond, with their players out, he can do a bit of damage there. Collingwood, I reckon he can kick a bag. And St Kilda, I reckon he can kick a bag. Mm. So, no, I don't think he's not a threat. I think he's still up there. But the other thing with a lot of forwards is you can only be as good as what your midfield is. Because mm. if you're getting horrific delivery inside 50, well, you're not going to kick. But if you're getting that crisp, sharp ball movement like what Tommy McDonald and Ben Brown are getting at the moment, you're obviously going to look a million times better. Yeah, that's very true. What are your thoughts on Tex Walker's season? On Tex, he's had the good start. I think Adelaide will still have enough good games where he can bob up, but mm. I don't know if he'll necessarily win the Coleman from this point. Yeah, yeah it does it's seem... Mackay's to lose, but I don't even think Mackay can necessarily win it. Really? Mackay's been so consistent, though. Yeah. I'll... He's like, bagging threes and well, fours. Well, even when he got dominated by Darcy Moore in round two or round three, mm. he still kicked four or five. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Darcy Moore was the best player on the ground, but yeah. he still kicked four or five. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, he's, he's had at least one bag of seven. Was it against you lot that he kicked seven? Yeah, he's had a couple of big games. Yeah, I think he might even have a second bag of seven. I don't know if I'm conjuring But that. in terms of Coleman in general, I was mm. actually going to double down on my pre-season prediction. Tabata? Yeah. Really? He's right in the thick of it, but he hasn't had that game where he's kicked an absolute bag like mm. some of these other contenders, and I think he could have a game where he kicks a bag and sure. makes that up. So I'm going to stick with that preseason call. He's plodding along nicely, averaging yeah, three or four a game. Like he's, not too he's keeping bad. pace to have that big bag that yeah, that's guys right. like Mackay have had, guys like even Josh Bruce is in the thick of it. Texas had the big bags. Personally, I think Mackay's going to win it now. It's his to lose, obviously. But I, I did, it's easy just to pick the form yeah. forward yeah. at the time. But um, yeah. but I just think I mean, contrast with Adelaide, Mackay's kicking bags when they're not playing well. Yeah. Mm. Whereas I mean, Texas has done that to some extent. But he's also Adelaide also had a real purple patch. Yeah. Because Carlton haven't really hit their straps this year other than maybe one really good win against you guys. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a lot of upside for Mackay and he's yeah. young and yeah, I don't well, know. I think he's only twenty three. Yeah, is the part yeah. That's scary. He wasn't drafted that long ago. Yeah, he's just finally filling out. He's like two metres tall. Um, yeah, got a lot going for him. 
Scoobs Ahoy asks, is Nathan Buckley at fault for Collingwood losing form? Does he deserve the sack or does he just need more support from assistant coaches such as Robert Harvey and Brenton Sanderson who have been at the club since 2012 and 2016 respectively? So I guess a way of paraphrasing that is, to what extent does the blame for their slump at the moment rest on Buckley's shoulders? I think we did talk a little bit about this last podcast. We gave a good what, coverage for last one, I'm pretty sure. The Buckley yeah, stuff. Has, your, um, has your stance on Buckley changed at all in recent weeks? Not really. I've, I've always sort of been a proponent of the idea that he was protected by Eddie Maguire. Right. Yeah. I think also if you look at his record, apart from 2018 when they almost snagged the flag, 2019 mm. when there was a prelim, and the very early stages of 2020 when they just looked like the team to beat. Yeah. He actually hasn't got that good a record as a coach. Yeah. Mm. And so I think, and you know, when he's saying needs more assistance, it's like, well, you know, Harvey's been there since 2012. Sanderson's been there since 2016, I think 16. it is. Yeah. So, I mean, like, unless his assistant coaches are yes men, I don't know how he can improve. Mm. So, and I think the big loss is J-Lo. And mm. if I'm J-Lo, I'm, I'm even inquiring about some of the players at Collingwood who they've been bashed, like, De Gaulle is the obvious one who yeah, everyone yeah. just loves to bash. When they're playing well, best player in the comp. When they play like crap, it's, oh, you should trade him. And mm. If I was Fremantle, I'd certainly be inquiring about his services. Even a handy. couple of the other ones like Sire, Elliot, even mm. Maynard. I'd look at those four mm. if I was J-Lo. But yeah. going back to the point, yeah, I think he's at fault. Because I think he's lost the trust with the playing group. Yeah, yeah especially like the off-season stuff where he's come out and made those comments about Trelaw, who from all... Mm. visual like from what you can say is a class guy like mm. not like someone you'd want to bag out yeah yeah I, uh, I, I've been consistent all year that I think Collingwood should be a lot higher on the ladder oh, than yeah. they are I don't think the talent they've lost is that yeah, severe they're still talented they lost Trelaw and Stevenson that does not yeah. cause a club to fall out of winning a final to currently bottom two yeah they're underperforming their stars at times have underperformed they've only their injury list is as good as I've ever seen it, to be honest, yeah. other than Taylor Adams being out for a while. Mm. Yeah. Um, they copped major injuries in 18 and 19. So the point I'm trying to make is, if you've got the talent and it's not coming to fruition, then the buck stops with the coach. Yeah, it, it does. does. And, and the same thing, you know, Buckley's ultimately responsible for the performance of, you know, his assist- assistance to some extent, yeah. uh, barring, you know, like something wild. Um, generally, he's, he's that's where the buck stops and... Yeah, I do think he deserves a blame, and it's gonna. He's, I think it's gonna need to take a massive lift in form for him to keep his job yes. for the rest of the year. I agree, definitely. Um, next up, we have Jay Shannon 5 asking, "If you are Zach Merritt, what do you do? Stay or leave?" So there's been a bit of talk about um, Zach Merritt's free agency this year. I think he will be a restricted free agent. Let's talk of. I think it's it's Port Adelaide's one of them. Collingwood's another contender. Brisbane. Brisbane. I wanted to yeah. say. So those are the three that I've heard about. Yeah. Um, Judging the situation at Essendon right now, I'll start with you, Bush. If you're Zach Merritt, what would you do? I don't dislike the situation at Essendon, actually. They had that really good draft class. They've injected that bit of youth. They probably haven't had like immediate success with Port Adelaide had when they injected the youth. But you can see where they're going. Like Even though they haven't had the best record this year, like all their games have been very competitive, a couple of heartbreakers, mm. and they've looked pretty good on whole, including Merritt as sort of the crux of it. If you were choosing where to go between Brisbane, Port, and Collingwood, where would you go and why? Is he from? He's a Victorian. He's a Victorian. I think he's country. Yeah, he's okay. a country boy. Yeah. Okay, so he's not as drawn to the no. one in the stay in Melbourne sort of thing. Mm. I'd probably still stay. They'd yeah. probably pay more than a Brisbane or a Port can. Yeah, in theory. Yeah. yeah. What about yourself, Lenny? Uh, and I, I see. Sorry, just quick on that point. And he's more valuable to Essendon than another team as well. I think so. Essendon should be prepared. Similar to the Patrick yeah. Cripps, where. No one realistically should outbid Carlton for his yeah, services because they need him more than anyone else. If I was him, I'd stay at Essendon, just become a club grade, be mm. welcome there when you once you retire and yeah. all that. Um, if I had to pick one of Collingwood, Brisbane, Port, I'd probably choose Brisbane because mm. I think the midfield depth can uh, count for it. Whereas at Port, I know it might sound bad, but Boke's 33, even though he's playing ridiculously well. Yeah. You've got Gray, who's getting older. So even though they've got a lot of young talent, I think Brisbane's more in a prime situation. Yeah. That's just my personal thoughts. Mm. Um, and if he doesn't really like the limelight as much, I don't know if he does, but if that's a factor, Brisbane, yeah. you can walk down the street, no one's going to bother you. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but I would stay at Essendon. I yeah. think I think they're building something special. Rutten's a good coach. Um, yeah. Likewise, if I was Jake Stringer, I'd stay at Essendon as well. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. 
Yeah, it's a tough one for me. I think uh, I can see the temptation to go to Collingwood because um, even though we've been bagging them and they're in a bit of a shambles right now, I can't see them staying down for too long. I yeah. think they're too well a resource club. They're always going to be a destination club. I think you could sell the image to Zach Merritt to say, oh, you come on board. We're going to short circuit this um, this rebuild. You know, we're going to yeah. get a few other stars. Nick Dykos. Yeah, Dykos next year. Um, a, bit, a bit of young talent going yeah. at Collingwood. Um, like, it's not an ideal situation what's happening right now, but it's like... To contrast going to a rebuilding Collingwood versus a rebuilding, sorry to say this, Melbourne mm-hmm. <laughs> over the last 10 years, yeah. it's different at Collingwood in my belief. So I can see why he would go to Collingwood, but in terms of who's going to finish higher, certainly this year, you think it's Essendon. So yeah. if, you, if you're look chasing success um, and not coin, Collingwood probably doesn't make too much sense. Then it's just a flip the coin between Brisbane and Port. And how can Collingwood sides. outpay anyone when they've just had to let a bunch of guys go because they can't manage their salary cap? How are they going to yeah. give Zach Merritt a competitive money offer? Because like, yeah. the thing is, the way they're the way they're looking at the moment, bottom two, you'd want their money offer to be ultra competitive to make up for the yeah. I agree. current lack of competitiveness on the field. I agree. I think the theory that I've read is that part of this moving around of Trelaw and Stevenson was to build a, a war chest for this year, and Zach Merritt was yeah. like, from what I read the top target so I don't know if we, can, we can assume that if they're throwing money at him it's probably yeah. substantial yeah yeah, yeah cool alright Matty Pollock uh, we're talking about some final stuff now top 8 and stuff um, do you think the current top 8 will remain the same by the end of the season so uh, I'm going to go off the top of my head here I think I remember the top 4 not in order but you got Melbourne the Dogs Port Geelong Richmond uh, West Coast did I say Brisbane yet and then Sydney yeah so that's that eight. sounds about right okay so off the top of my, like, interestingly, six of those finished finals last year, the two new sides of Melbourne and Sydney, I guess, is there anyone in that top eight that you can think of that you f- might fall out or a team outside the eight that will come back in? I'll start with you, Lenny. Potentially Sydney, just because they're so young, but yeah. history does say that once the top eight's sort of set, now it's generally set for the year. Mm. So the only one I can see is maybe Sydney coming out, but... No, I'm going to be safe and say I think it's set. What about yourself? I'm pretty much same sort of train like Sydney. Like the only question is do they have the legs to finish out the season? But assuming they do, they can definitely hold on. They've got the talent. Yeah, I agree. Like there's too many teams that you just can't bet against in that top eight. Mm-hmm. The, the, like the entrenched sides are Melbourne. Um, yeah. I think if they've earned that, the Dogs hard to yeah. see them dropping yeah. out eight and one. I think they are or seven and one. Yeah. Um, there's Richmond. Um, I guess you can make a case where the injury is getting the better of them, but I think you'd be a brave man to tip them falling out. Yeah. Port Adelaide, Brisbane, I feel like yeah. they're you know, mature entrenched. sides yet. The last couple of years they've shown good finals positioning. So Yeah, and I, I've, I feel comfortable that the Eagles will make it, but they're probably more vulnerable than your Geelong, Brisbane, Ports. But they're yeah, also, other than Sydney, probably the Eagles are the most vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably... And even then they're not that vulnerable. yeah. Yeah, I think they've got, they're probably in that sixth to seventh yeah. conversation at the moment. If they started losing games at Optus, I'd be yeah. concerned. Yeah, that's so, what so I'd that, say. Yeah, the arse could thing. fall out of them, whereas I don't see it happening as much to John and Brisbane. I, I think the reason being um, the injuries at the moment are already yeah. severe. Yeah. <laughs> so like, it could get worse and that could ruin them. But um, I guess, are there any teams outside the eight that you think are a sneaky chance to come in? Maybe no, Giants. Not. Yeah. Maybe Giants. But again, it just depends what happens because... Mm. Mm. I think mm. um, Jesse Hogan just got injured again, so short term. Did he? Like, sh- oh, yeah. short term. Okay, I didn't yeah. actually hear that. Yeah, because he uh, played the first game and then didn't play the final week because he was injured. But I think it's a short term. Might yeah, be back so in the next week. I think for Giants, it really just depends on their injuries. Yeah, and then mm. also just depends how hard Sydney keep playing. Mm. See, so, yeah, yeah. I um I like that. I I think the Giants are the strongest team outside the eight at the moment. Um, so there's St Kilda as well, who are a little bit Jekyll and Hyde at the mm. moment, and it's hard to really. We know what they're capable of, but we're we're also seeing them lose every second week in a disastrous yeah. way. I think the Giants are playing the best football at the very minute um, out of that team, and they've had their injuries, so there's upside. Yeah. Um, the midfield's starting to play well. I do quite like them. Are the Dockers going to miss another final series? Asked Legend Ace. So I pers- I think I said on the Drew Footy Show during the week. The Dockers are probably the bottom part of that group that can still pinch eighth. Mm. Yeah. With your St. Kilda's, GWS, and um, yeah. someone else. Carlton? Yeah, I mean, Carlton's probably in that group. Yeah, you got Essendon and Gold Coast probably just below. Yeah. Yeah. Um, less likely, but Fremantle are probably still... They're probably possible. that fourth team out of all those teams that yeah. can make it back. Yeah, so do you think, fair to say, you're yeah, predicting we'll that they'll miss the finals? Yeah. I even did think that Port next year's the year where it sort of starts to really sure. show, I think. Yeah. You can still have a positive year and yeah. not make finals. Well, so. look at Melbourne last year. They won more games than they lost, but they yeah. finished ninth. And now look at them. They're killing it. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. That's very true. 
Comedy Bird, what are your thoughts on Geelong's trio and attack? Gary Rowan, Tom Hawkins, and Jeremy Cameron. How can some contending clubs deal with them? I don't know if there's an answer to this question, to be honest, yeah. because that is uh, the most potent forward line in the competition. There's no simple answer. you just got to look at a team that's got two good key defenders and a good hybrid defender who can play yeah. on a Gary Rowan type. F- first team that comes to mind is West Coast, because I believe in Gov and Brass, and, and then Shep, on Shep, Shep slash Rowan, Robham, yeah. like, particularly Shep. Yeah. Um, yeah. They have that. Uh, but yeah, other than that, like it's you need a, start a healthy Freo maybe. They again, yeah. even Luke Ryan might not have the pace to keep up with a Gary Ryan as that hybridy type guy. Yeah, because Gary Ryan's a quick bastard. Yeah, at the very least. Well, the no. part that's scary is Dan- if Dangerfield comes back, do you just put him forward and really stretch opposition mm. defence? Mm. <laughs> I'd love seeing Danger in the guts though. That so I don't know. I think the way Geelong's midfield's playing at the moment, I think I'd just play him forward and yeah, just put him as like a little it. burst in the midfield. But true. Um, the part I don't know if Bush is going to agree with me. They remind me of the Warriors when it was Thompson, Curry, Durant, because it's almost mm. like if you shut one down, the other two just get off the chain, mm. and then you yeah. go to like put one of it, you put your tag onto one of them, and then that other what guy just gets off the chain again. So yeah, it's, it's hard actually incredibly guys. scary what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, and uh, they're all different players. Like Hawkins has got the strength, throwing has got the speed, and then Cameron's more like your. He's got a bit of he's got a bit of buddy in like that reasonably agile key forward like can do yeah. like the short stuff but yeah. can also take a bit of a yeah. grab as well. It's more your all round centre half forward mm. is how I'd describe it. Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. Yeah, they are so difficult to defend. And I did just mention the Eagles. I don't think the Eagles have the best defence in the league. I just came up with that because it was close yeah. to home. Yeah. Um, and, but they're a team that with two really good key backs. And Maybe good Port. I was going to say Port actually, with Clury, Jonas, and um. And yeah, I was going to yeah. say Melbourne actually with Lever, yeah, Lever and May, May and Neville Jett. Is he still? Yeah. Uh, there? I mean, he's still there because yeah, he's a good little hybrid defender. But even yeah. Salem, 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 even yeah. Salem can yeah. defend. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. Those are those are the big dogs, and I think the what well, we saw what happened to the Eagles in Geelong not long ago. <laughs> 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 Geelong is a very hard team at the Cattery. Oh, yeah, yeah, they are. It's incredibly and, uh, tough. That was just the easiest tip I've done all year, Geelong, to beat us. By, I think I tipped, by, tipped them by 45, but yeah, it obviously went a bit worse <laughs> than that. Um, yeah, I, I think we're all in agreement that it's the most dangerous attack in the league. Um, and come finals time, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a stretch for any defence. But like you say, someone like a Melbourne at the moment, I feel feel they could handle it mm. at a port. Also because their midfields of both those teams can actually shut down the easy ball coming from... Very true. Yeah, and that's yeah something where West Coast probably falls short. Another Geelong question. We got Zoc Kirk says, "Is Mark O'Connor the only true tagger in the AFL? And if not, is he the best?" I can't think of too yeah, many I other tags. Um, I, I think he's the best. When it's you like look Levi at, Greenwood. Yeah, but does, I mean, like he, count? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, look, he probably does. But I think I think O'Connor is just the best player or the best tagger, I should say. Yeah. But, yeah. I agree with that. I, I would nominate Mark Hutchings for the Eagles in the sense that when he plays, he's usually tagging, almost always, to yeah. be honest. Obviously, I'm not going to say he's as good as Mark O'Connor because he's barely been on the park, yeah. and Mark O'Connor's killing it. But that's one player I can think of who's a genuine tagger. Now there's run-with roles. You get players like doing a run-with job. Yeah. Like For us, at the moment, it's Jackson Nelson, but yeah. I still wouldn't class him as a tagger as such because he'll, yeah. he'll move around the field as well. But, yeah, yeah no, I think Mark O'Connor's absolutely killing it. Um. Jai asks, not Joe. So apparently in the last podcast, I called this young fella Joe. Uh, Joe. <laughs> I don't know why, um, because I knew his name was Jai, so I must have just misspoke. But he wants to know our thoughts on Brisbane generally, and in particular, Lincoln McCarthy and Hugh McCluggage as potential All-Australian contenders. Well, I'll let you go first, Busher. What do you think? Oh, so Brizzy are looking pretty good. That's pretty much a given. Like, they're mm. a good team. They're going to be in the thicker finals, as we were talking about before. Yeah. McCluggage definitely an All Australian, especially if they actually put wingers on the wing. Yep, that's I agree a lot. But even if they don't, he's realistically a pretty yeah. close. Because well, he's also lock. playing inside a bit now, so yeah. that's probably yeah. going to help him. Yeah, that's sure. True. Especially with Neil out for a few more weeks. Yeah. What about yourself, Lenny? What do you think? I think Brisbane, they're looking dangerous because I don't think they're quite playing at their best at the moment. I mean, I know they've beaten some teams well, but I think they've also just gone. Not over the line, but over the line, if that makes sense, by like three goals when they could have been aside by like, say, maybe six or seven. But mm. um, Like even the Dockers game last week, I'll, like as a Dockers fan, I was happy we only lost by 24 sort of thing. Yeah. Like I thought that was a good effort from our end considering how talented Brisbane are. Yeah, so yeah. I think they're not trying to, I think they're doing what we said in the start of the season, they're not trying to get that first on the ladder, win the minor premiership, they're wanting to think, finish more fourth and then do more damage. But I agree with Bush, I think McCluggage is a lock for all Australian on the wing. McCarthy could make the squad, but I don't think he'll be all Australian. I think it, Papley's in front of him. I think Charlie Cameron's in front. Green, Fritch. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. His, his statistics aren't that spectacular either. I mean, yeah. it's just stats, but he averages a goal a game and 14 disposals. Yeah. Four and a half tackles, but he had one game where he got 11 tackles yeah. um, in yeah. a big win. So, yeah, maybe I need to watch him closer, but I don't know if he's... I know he's I having he's quite a big out. impact, but I think the other guys, yeah. like, when you look at what Pat Bliss done at Sydney, that's exactly. why they've risen up the ladder. Toby Green, I think, actually is the best small forward in the game mm. because he can also go in the midfield and he can turn games. And Charlie's just starting to flip Find the his switch. Form again. I yeah. agree. Totally agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah, McCluggage, I don't know, sorry, I don't know if you said it, but he's leading the coaches award. Did you, did you say that? No, no but no, I knew okay. that. But yeah, no, he, so yeah, this week he, he overtook... Um, Big Mundog. Yes, it was Mundy. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, went to, went to water there. Uh, he's leading the coaches award, um, which in my opinion is the most... Uh, Valuable. Important, valuable award in terms yeah. of like uh, it's it's better than the brown. Best line. reflection of that's yeah, what I'm trying to say. Reflection of talent, exactly. So well, because defenders can also get votes, exactly, and the, and the coaches have better insight as to the roles that are being yeah. played, and also when a p- opposition player nullifies what that team's trying to do, the yeah. coach generally has a better handle on that. So even your Brad Shepherds will get more votes yeah. than they're never yeah. going to get Brownlow votes. Yeah. Um, just an example. But and even like Will lot, Schofield yeah. in the grand final, I think he got the 10 coaches votes. Did he? I didn't even know Oh, that. it might have gone eight and Shuey got 10. But yeah, okay. in a, if that was like an umpire Brownlow votes, it's probably Shuey, Adams, and, um, Adams, Adams, yeah. And Sheed, yeah. 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 yeah, that's right. Yeah, totally agree. Um, cool. Yeah, so I think we're all in agreement. It's McCluggage, Locke, McCarthy, pretty outside chance. The 40. Pretty, yeah, outside chance, though. Um, Brody Anderson then asks, what do you make of West Coast's bad performances outside of WA? I'm going to smash this out of the yeah. park. I've been talking about this on the Drew Footy Show. The fact that we can't win away is a myth, yeah. in my opinion. No, it's not even my opinion. Yeah. It's fact. Accept it. No. I'll, I'll explain why. To look at this year in isolation, it's such a small sample size. You need yeah. to look at a broader sp- scope than that. This year, the Eagles away games have been against the Dogs in a game they nearly and should have won. Yeah. I think the Dogs played better on the day. Mm. And if we'd won, it would have been a bit of a whew, kind of yeah. win. Yeah. But Jer- uh, Jamie Cripps... Kicks into the man in the mark in the goal square, yeah. which what would, would have been the sealer. We should have won that game, so we clearly could play that game. St Kilda, we were five goals up, yeah. and don't get me wrong, that the second half was an abomination, one of the angriest I've ever been in an Eagles game, and I won't say they played well, but you don't get five goals up if you can't play a stadium. Yeah, yeah. Geelong, we know what happened to Geelong. Yeah. We can't play in Geelong. Yeah. Geelong, sure. Well, I accept that. A lot, a lot of teams can't play in Geelong. Exactly, exactly. So I accept that, and then we've won our fourth game. 2018, we went undefeated in Melbourne. 2019, we won at least one game of the Jack uh, against Hawthorne, um, and we probably only played two or three games there, yeah. and against tough opponents. So I think we lost to Richmond and Geelong the other two. Yeah. 2020, we didn't play in Melbourne at all. We played in Queensland, which I agree we suck at. So the, the narrative isn't... But that was hub context as much as just general. Away. Yes, but we also are an average team in Queensland. But also because the ball's that. quite slippery, and West Coast yes. like to play that chipmark, yeah. chipmark chip game, whereas yeah. you can't yeah, really play that. You've got to play... And all our games were at night, which was the most frustrating thing Mm. because when we played the few games in the day, we actually could play on our terms, moving around the ball fast. I don't want to make excuses. It's just Mm, you can't play in the wet, then that's just a massive weakness you've got to get past. But, uh, yeah, long story short, we suck in Queensland, really good in Melbourne. The Eagles are good outside WA. Yeah, that hasn't really been a thing since, like, 15, 16. Yeah, it's just a lazy sort of, like... They can't win. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It was a thing back in 15, 16, but... Well, Whenever it was a thing, it was a thing. But we were bad at the G at one point. Yeah. I'll accept that. We've always fifteen. Been... It might have been fifteen. Was a bit of a thing in New Zealand. So we got smacked in the grand final, but we did beat Richmond at the G in fifteen, yeah. and Richmond came fifth that year. Yeah. But I agree that yeah, when we were a good Marvel team, have been for years. Uh, we suck at the SCG. We suck at the Gabba. Uh, that's probably the only t- and GMHBA. And Adelaide, you're good at. Yeah, so Adelaide, yeah, we've, like Adelaide. we've never lost a port in Adelaide, Adelaide Oval. Huh. It's wild, hey. That is. <laughs> yeah, no, it's crazy. Uh, anyway, so yeah, enough of the West Coast talk until the next question, which is... <laughs> I was going to say the next question. Yeah, the next <laughs> question the is, Chris, uh, when will Frio ever beat West Coast again? Sick of seeing that winning streak extend. Oh, never. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> let's yeah. just be honest now. Nah. Look, I think... Oh, this just your oh, mic there. Sorry. Um, All good. The last... Um, Derby, I think it was just actually the worst time Frio could have run into West Coast. Yeah. Got spanked by Geelong. Your coach called them pathetic yeah. and weak. I mean, if you're not going to get a response after that mm. against your arch rival, yeah. I mean, by God, mm. yeah. <laughs> what is your response going to be? So, 
when with all the West Coast fans that come up to me and go, "Oh, you missed your best chance," I kept saying it's probably our worst chance. Yeah. Well, I thought it was our. I was one of those ones who thought it was our best chance. Like I thought it was a no. smell of blood type of situation, and they dropped yeah. the ball completely. As soon as I just saw Simpson go, "Oh, we were pathetic. We were weak." I was like, "Oh God! Rats. Oh <laughs> God! No, Simo, please." I agree. It was probably a bad time to catch West Coast. Uh, I don't think. I don't think it's like a case of when will Frio beat West Coast. It's obviously going to happen. Mm, um, some point yeah, But I, I, I don't know when Because like, I thought that last one Was our best chance I can't Honestly if you told it. me The second derby this year I could believe it Yeah Depend I But don't know. Uh, Yeah I, I mean the Eagles Are better right now So yeah. if you're betting on Who you think is better It's going to be the Eagles Probably this year And then next year Is probably a little bit blurrier I still mm. believe the Eagles Are not dropping off yeah. But yeah. I'm a blind Optimistic Eagles fan <laughs> yeah. um, But I, I'm sure within a couple of years Fruit Man yeah. will pinch one To be yeah. honest So just depends on Freo's injuries, really. It really does, yeah. And that's one mm. thing people don't realise over East Fremantle have been decimated, um, especially in their back half, yeah. so to speak. Like, even the other day, I was bloody just having any text with the old boy because he's over in Queensland at the moment. He was saying, yeah, the game up. Because I was like, did you go to the game? Because it was in Brizzy. But he's like, no, nah, no. Nah. But then I was listing all the injuries because he was saying how shit we looked, even though we only lost by 20. I was like, the, literally our whole back line's out. Like, Ryan's like, out, Hamlin's Ryan, out, Pitt, Pierce is out. Chapman, yeah. Young, yeah. Ethan mm. Hughes. Yeah. We had no brass governor. Hearn. Yeah. Sorry, just to throw that back at you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I agree. I agree with your point. Um, okay, we got about four questions left. Chockstar, uh, a couple of Hawthorne questions here. So he wants to know our thoughts on uh, Hawthorne's young big three, the key forwards. I think we did talk a little bit about Hawthorne's keys uh, not too long ago. Uh, Mitch Lewis, Jacob Kaczynski, and Emerson Jecker. Uh, Lenny, do you have a particular opinion on the, the three at the front that they have there? Oh, look, they've got a bright future, but keys take time. Mm. So, um, look, there's no doubt about it. Hawthorne's in a rebuild. Mm. I don't care. The Haw- Hawthorne fans can say to me, no, we're better than that. You're in a rebuild. Yeah. That's it. You're in a Jeff rebuild. Jeff Kennedy himself said it the other week. Yeah, so, he even uh, came out and said, Hawthorne fans don't expect shit for two years. We're going to go heavy in the draft. Yeah. And it came out the other week. Yeah, so look, I think they're in a rebuild. Give them a bit of time. Be a bit patient with them. And they'll be good players. But patience is a virtue. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I, I mean... None of them were high draft picks. I think they're all kind of speculative picks. So when that happens, we know less about them because, yeah. like yourself, I, we look at the draft. So you know, we know that a you know a Ben King is going to be yeah. good, but um, we don't know too much about Mitch Lewis because it's because he was a Jacker. pick eighty eight, wasn't he, Mitch Lewis? He was. He was the pick that they sent for Sam Mitchell, and they traded Jordan Lewis that year as well. So like Mitch yeah. Lewis, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. but uh, they were pretty competitive against the Eagles, admittedly without defenders, but. Um, they look pretty solid and Kaczynski yeah. has a rising star nomination this year for a bag of six five six, or six, six no, or I think six. he kicks five or six in the preseason as well so yeah, um, yeah that's right because Tilford kicked five yeah. and, he, and he did get it um, yeah like what we see I mean if I was Hawthorne I'd be a bit more comfortable if I sort of invested a higher pick into yeah. like a genuine real like in the same way they got Granger Barras I think that's still yeah. something they should look at yeah um, but you know yeah Lewis kicked eight goals in five games Kaczynski nine goals in seven games uh, definitely worth persisting with yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, Oliver Mears asks, do you think Hawthorne have a chance of avoiding the bottom four? What do you think, Bush? It's probably going to be hard. Yeah, I don't see it. I yeah, realistically, all those teams we've listed are really good. And even that mid-tier of teams, like the Dockers, GWS type tier of teams, mm. is probably too good for them this year. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think but, Collingwood should be better than them. Which yeah. makes it hard. So mm. if Collingwood get the shit together, then they're going to find it even harder. Yeah, so. yeah. No, I agree with that. I don't mm. think. No. It'll be a couple of years of pain, but they'll be good. Clarkson, yeah, yeah. that's your coach. I think he'll get yeah. you good. And Mitchell is your development coach. Yeah. Good, good, some decent youth. Uh, won't blow it out of proportion, but yeah. yeah. Will Day, Granger Barras, like. GF. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, a lot of talent there. Uh, cool. I think. Um, oh, no. Second last question. Another Eagles one. Sorry, guys. Uh, ben Herbie says if the Eagles don't make a good run at finals this year, should they dip into the draft? I'll let. When are you boys I think they one? should dip into the draft regardless at this point. The last few, like, they've invested the last couple of drafts worth of picks into Tim Kelly, for yep. example. Like, even, like, you've seen it with some of the midfield injuries, like, some of the midfield depth, you're sort of like, oh, we'll play them, but mm. you don't feel too happy about it sort of thing. Mm. Yep. So sort of, like, be worth going through the draft, getting a few more good midfielders for the door. You're good for Ks, so mm. that's something. Well said. What about yourself, Lenny? I'm going to ask you a question about list management because okay. rumours have been that West Coast was considering trading Elliot Yo for Patrick Cripps. It has been refuted. Yes. In my opinion, I think Yo is your most important midfielder. Mm, yeah. So I was going to ask, what were your thoughts on that alleged trade rumour? Uh, other than dismissing it as rubbish, um, mm. 
because that's what people do when they hear about a key player getting traded. Yeah. <laughs> like, but I mean, I don't think it's true. But um, regardless, so like hypothetically, you know, Elliot Yo, absolutely no, yeah. no yeah. way of trading him, even if it's direct swap for Paddy Cripps. Yeah, Paddy Cripps is out of form at the moment. Um, but he's got a fractured back. They've announced. Yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. So we got a bit more context on Paddy Cripps there. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, Elliot Yo's almost the single player I would want to trade least on the list. Yeah, actually, apart from Shuey. Well, Shuey's like thirty. I mean, it would hurt. Oscar me Allen to see him. be the yeah, most okay, untouchable. Mate, I Oscar Allen and Elliot Yo, um, right up there. Shuey, okay, he's 30, 31 this year. Yeah. So if he says I want to play my last two years at Melbourne, sure it would hurt me. But from a list management perspective, Yo and Allen would be the first two I'd, I'd okay. pitch. So yeah. Yeah. To answer the question, I think I totally. I think you know, hit the nail on the head. We, first of all, we can't actually trade our first rounder this year because mm. we haven't taken one since 2017 when we took yeah. Brander and then Allen and all those guys. Thankfully, we nailed that draft, which allowed yeah. us to take a back seat. But um, we do need an injection of youth, and that has nothing to do with the idea that we need to rebuild. But the midfield stocks are really bare after the best yeah. 22, um, yeah. and we're starting to see them a little bit exposed now. I like Xavier O'Neill, but... Yeah, someone like a Johnson in this year's draft um, yeah. from Subi. Is yeah, Matty Subi? Johnson, yep. Yeah, so he's someone I would like, in theory, would love to, to yeah. nab in the first round. Like, the last midfielder we took in the first round was Dom Sheet. Oh, nab AFL draft. I see what you did there. Ah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> sponsors. Sponsors. Yeah. yeah, nab sponsors. Yeah, so what's that? The first, yeah, the only first round draft pick we spent on a midfielder is Dom Sheet, and that was 2013. Yeah. So it's time. Yeah. Um, yeah, either way, I agree. You need to refresh the list with draft picks. That's, yeah. that's Even if you have a good year this year. Yeah, regardless. Yeah. Exactly right, yeah. Um, but I don't think we need to rebuild, as I've said no. in the past. Uh, final question. Josh Humphrey says, where did you watch the 2018 Grand Final? What were your thoughts throughout the game and your reaction? So, I hate doing this to plug my own content. But I can't give you a full in-depth answer on this, but if you want to see, I've made several pieces of content on this. I've done a 2018 Grand Final vlog. You can search it. I've done a video called What AFL Means to Me where I talk about the grand final. I've done a video called Best and Worst Moments as an Eagles Fan and I've done an Adam Simpson documentary, all of which you can see my in-depth thoughts. But I will answer that I was at the game um, and I was I tipped us because it was more of a hope. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's hard to be emotionally... Like the logic that I tip Fremantle with most of the time. Yeah, basically. sure. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't think I've ever tipped against the Eagles in a grand final. I'll just tip them regardless of yeah. you know the context. So I tipped us, and then at the game, the first five goals, Yeah, I was at 2015 as well, so the rules of the crowd, it all came flooding back to me, and I thought, this is, gonna, this is exactly how 2015 went, this is going to be the exact same way. I was like, even thinking, oh shit, do we go? Like, <laughs> I was never going to leave, obviously, yeah. but you know, it was, it was a bit emotional, and then the slow comeback was, um, it was a sort of like... Uh, like any grand final, every goal is a release of tension. So yeah. it's just you cheer every goal like you've won, won the grand final. Um, and then that early fourth quarter. Yeah. Yeah, and then early fourth quarter, they my check to go yeah. Exactly right. Uh, and then I was like, nah, we're fucked again. Yeah, that's <laughs> when I cashed out when they put those couple on. Yeah. And I cashed out on West Coast. Going, yeah, Collingwood, my Collingwood bet will cash and I'll just get a bit of extra money off this West Coast bet. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Goddamn dom shade. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful fucked man. Exactly. Beautiful fucked man. Gross. <laughs> Sounds like your search history. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a great laugh. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just going to say, when, when we kicked the goal to go in front, I burst into tears. I was a very emotional yeah. man. And uh, When to go, we kicked it, did you No, say? sorry, when, when she kicked oh, the goal. Oh, yeah, when, yeah, yeah, when yeah. she kicked the goal for us to hit the front. Um, yeah, I was a very emotional man. And then... Uh, was very confident we were going to win and then I just I do remember Jack Darling dropping the mark in the goal <laughs> yeah. and being like oh my god but um, yeah no it's a bit of a blur now but even then when Yo went to kick it and Varko almost smutted it perfectly yeah, straight I to know. Adams and yeah. we've just gone straight over the top that was almost the last play of the game um, yeah that that almost decided the grand final if Varko had yeah. smothered that it was probably a good 20 seconds yeah. to launch it forward so yeah, those were my thoughts on the game. Uh, where did you watch that grand final? I was yeah. at a mate's place and yeah. just, um, mate, it's probably one of the best grand finals I've seen. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I'll say where I was, I was at the lead singer of this band, Spud King's House, so I'll give oh, yeah. a quick shout out to the oh. Spud King boys. But yeah, I had a good time watching the Grandy there, other than the mistiming of my cash outs, but other than that, it was a, too much of a good game for me to be mad about it, really. Mm. Yeah. It was probably one of the best grand finals I've ever watched. Yeah. I think it was up there with 06. It's very, again, I'm biased. Yeah. I was at 06 and that was... Yeah. An equally good game, I thought, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, I think that just about wraps up True Footy Podcast 75. Um, thank you so much for all your questions. Um, stay tuned for more content on the channel. Thank you so much to Lenny. He's taking the time out of his day to uh, to come join us today. He's you know, a busy man. He's gotten a new position. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's 
pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. going through life, yeah. good. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And um, yeah, thank you, Busher, for letting us have your games room. Absolutely. Yeah, cheers. All right, guys. Uh, remember, these episodes are also on Spotify and iTunes as well. Uh, if you couldn't watch on YouTube, um, but yeah, thanks, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>